Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back. So for today's video, we're doing another video where I, heavy quotations, fix some doll designs that I am just like not the biggest fan of. And today on the chopping block, we have Ever After High. So I've already done this video concept for, I think it was the Holiday Barbies and then Shadow High and Rainbow High and then Chen Huan of Monster High. And now we are on to Ever After High. If you haven't seen the previous videos, so like you're a little bit confused about what I'm doing here. Basically, there are just some designs with like any doll brand Ever After High today that I think are not fixable, at least not with like heavy effort. You basically have to like scrap and start over. But there are even more that I'm like, this is almost a perfect design, at least in my eyes, or almost a really, really good design. But it just needs a little bit of tweaking here and there to give it that extra oomph. And so this is a series where I make those edits to these dolls and I try to make them align a bit more with my personal taste. Of course, the key thing there is that it is just my personal taste. You might really like the dolls as they come and you might hate what I edit them to, but like, that's okay. We all just have different opinions. It's just a fun exercise for me to do where I like take these doll designs and try to make these little edits to them because it's like a fun little creative thing for me to do. And you guys seem to have enjoyed the previous videos that I've done, so... We're back at it again today. I do have a running list going of different brands that y'all have suggested I do videos like this for. So if you have any more that you want to suggest to me in the comments, definitely feel free and I will add them to the list. But yes, Ever After High is what we are focusing on today. So if you find yourself enjoying the video, if you could give it a like, super helpful for me. If you're new here and you have fun, definitely subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. And then if you wanna go out of your way to support me, I have my PO box and stuff in the description down below. But without further ado, let's start talking about some of these dolls. Alrighty, so the first doll that I wanted to take a look at today is the Core Blondie Locks doll. And I do want to say really quick that I don't think on any of these it's going to be like a really crazy transformation. Some of the videos that I've done in the past, there's been like a much more drastic change that I've made. But these ones I feel like were all decently subtle. Um, so that is definitely going to be the case for Blondie here. The number one thing that bothers me is I don't like the way that the shoes look and what's funny is that in the past I think I've complained that it's like a very heavy black and then like the brown and I just feel like it doesn't work with the rest of her color palette but while I was doing this I originally was like okay let me make the shoes like the blue or like a white tone or even like a gold color and none of them were <laughs> it's like none of it worked at all and so what I think I like finally landed on was realizing that it wasn't the heavy black shoe that bothered me but more so the brown fur so that's like the biggest change that I made so here is my edit and I ended up giving her like slightly more realistic fur because like obviously it wasn't necessarily in the budget for the real Ever After High but I don't have to go in line with any budgets because this is just a silly little edit and I'm not actually making anything. So I did give her like proper fur on her shoes which I just think would be like a nice extra detail and I did also make it more of a like grayish white color because I just didn't think that the brown really fit almost at all and then I did try a couple of other things I tried like a few little recolors on her accessories and I just really wasn't feeling it I was like surprised by the fact that there were fewer things that I needed to do to this doll than I thought so the only other change is that from the original to my edit I did shorten her hair up a little bit I understand that a lot of dolls end up having long hair because it's like a hair play aspect for kids but from like a purely design standpoint, I just thought she looked better with a little bit shorter hair. And it's kind of interesting to have a little bit more versatility in the hair lengths. So those are my edits for Blondie. Quite subtle, doesn't make a huge difference, but I think it made enough of a difference to make me like this version more. <laughs> The next doll that I wanted to make an edit to was the Spring Unsprung Cerise doll. Now, as you guys may know, I haven't seen the Ever After High show yet. I do want to see it eventually. Like, I'm, I'm getting there. I just haven't gotten there quite yet. But just looking at the dolls and, like, from the vague knowledge that I do have about the show from just being online and, like, hearing about it from other people, I feel like Cerise is... Like, not an edgy character necessarily, like, not the same vibes of, like, Raven Queen, but I do feel like she's supposed to be, like, a little bit less girly-girly, a little bit less frilly. And so the thing that has always bothered me with this design, I've said this in videos before, is the gingham print. I love everything else about it. I think she's got a very striking color scheme. I think the hint of purple is really, really beautiful in there. But the gingham really really bothers me so i did try a few different things i actually tried making the dress all purple to like bring out that purple accent but at that point it wasn't an accent and it didn't look good so what i landed on was this and i colored in extra squares to make it more of a checker print instead of a gingham print which like i know that doesn't sound like a lot i know that that doesn't sound like anything noteworthy but there's a big difference like if you go back and forth <laughs> the vibe is completely different i feel like checker prints have a bit more of for lack of a better word like an edgy or an alternative connotation than the gingham print does like it's just 
it is a slightly different print and I feel like the vibe is very, very different with it. And I thought that this helped a lot to just give her a little bit more of that darker color also. So there was less white going on and to kind of make the vibe feel a little bit more appropriate for her. And then I did also add extra purple streaks in her hair because I really did want to play up that purple. I just think the little hint of purple she already had in her hair plus the little bit of purple on her leggings was really, really pretty with her color scheme. So I added a little bit more purple just to kind of like amp that up a smidge since I didn't make her dress purple in the end. And again, this is obviously just to my personal taste. I totally understand if you liked the original Spring Unsprung Cerise because she is an amazing doll. But looking at it again, like I just, I feel like it's a very small shift. It's very subtle, but I think the difference is really there. And I really like how this one turned out. Next up, we have the Dragon Games Darling Charming. And I love this doll. I would actually like to own her someday. I think 99% of her outfit is immaculate. I think her vibes are so beautiful. Her armor pieces are amazing. Like I really, really like this doll, but I don't like the leggings. I know it was very much of the time whenever After High was coming out. And so like, I, I understand why a lot of their dolls have these really crazy pattern leggings and like there's leggings on so many different dolls. But for me now in like 2024, that's just not the vibe anymore. And so the patterns on her leggings have always irked me because I feel like otherwise this doll would be quite literally perfect. And so that is the only thing that I ended up changing is I gave them a more solid pattern. I did keep just the metallic uh, like pink portions of there because like, I don't know, it did look a little bit boring because I tried it without that. Like I tried just doing straight up dark blue and it was a little bit boring and I like the metallic aspect. I'm a glitter person, so <laughs> it was hard for me to get rid of that. And I think this is a good compromise because it has a little bit of that print. So it still feels kind of like Ever After High. It kind of still feels whimsical, but I think having less of the print and having that darker color kind of gives more contrast with her outfit and lets that pink stand out more. And I just really, really love this. If I ever do manage to get this doll, I definitely plan on painting her leggings. I don't know if I would be able to like finesse it enough to keep the metallic portions, but I would want to either paint them or get her new leggings entirely just because I really am not obsessed with the ones that she comes with. And I think this is a really, really fun way to kind of like meet in the middle there of like between plain leggings and the ones that she had. So I'm obsessed with this. I know it's like, again, it's a tiny change. I warned y'all in the beginning that a lot of these were tiny changes, but I really think that there are a lot of Ever After High dolls that I don't like and that I think are essentially unsalvageable, <laughs> at least with like the skill set that I have in terms of doing these edits, or like at least in, in like the scope of not wanting to completely redesign the doll. But I also think a lot of the Ever After High dolls are really, really, really beautiful, and they just need a little bit of extra attention. And so that was the case with this doll, and I'm really happy with how this edit turned out. Alrighty, next up we have another blondie. This one is the Ever ever. <laughs> this one is the epic winter blondie. And she's probably the one that has like the least amount of technical changes. But I wanted to include her just because I do think that the epic winter line is a rough line from Ever After High. Just like for me personally, again, this is all like my own opinion. I don't like the line. I think a lot of those dolls are really, really bad. But I do think that blondie stands out as being a pretty good one. But when I look at her, my thought is like, I wish she had been produced earlier in Ever After High's run because maybe she would have gotten some more details. And so that's essentially all that I did is I did some like, basically just detail painting on her accessories. I changed her shoes. So she's got like the painted black straps running across and the pom poms are actually now the white color instead of just being that metallic blue color. And then on her bag, I gave her a yellow bow, same thing with the white pom poms and then black accent colors. I just think that it makes it pop more. Cause I think like, if you look at the original, the sculpting is really cool, but the lack of color is a little bit disappointing to me. Like the lack of the painted on detail is a little bit disappointing to me. So I kind of just did that digitally. And this is something that I think is relatively easy to do if you do have this doll to like add a little bit of extra oomph. I feel like painting on details in like molded on pieces is kind of one of the most common ways that people end up customizing dolls. So I think this is fun too, because it's really feasible to do if you have this doll, if you like this color scheme, or even if you just wanna like paint it a different color scheme. Like it, it's something that is very accessible, I guess is the best way to put it. So that was fun. And then the only other thing is that I did darken her lip color a little bit just because like in the original, I know I keep switching back and forth. I'm sorry. It's so pale. And like, I know a lot of the dolls have paler lipstick and I'm just kind of a sucker for dark lipstick. So that doesn't really help. But I just thought that making that 
pink a little bit darker. It's not dark. Like, it's just a little bit darker. Gave a little bit more contrast to her face. Made her look a little bit more made up. And that's just something that I personally enjoy. That one's extra tiny. Like, you might not even have noticed it when I first switched up the images. But again, I like it. And so, like, that's the point of the exercise is to try to make me like these dolls more. And I think I succeeded with this one. Okay, so for the second to last one, we have the signature cedar doll. I'm saving the one that I think has like the most dramatic transformation for last so that it's like fun for you guys. <laughs> um, big thing with her, I've said this in videos before, like when I ranked the Ever After I characters, I said this, I don't get these strings on her socks. Like I don't understand it. I don't like it. I don't think that it looks good. And so that was like the first thing that had to go. And I think it's immediately so much better when those are gone. Like I just think... I don't know, maybe you love it. And like, that's totally fine. Again, if you happen to like that, I just don't get them. And I think that the design is better without those being on there. And then just the other couple of little changes that I made is that right here, I need to pick a more solid brush so you can actually see this. Sorry. Right in here, I feel like it kind of looks strange for her suspenders to just be like tucked into this sewn portion. That just was a little bit bizarre to me. So I did add like a little band of that same material. So it's like, more cohesive. I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like I can't find the words for why I like that, but I just think it looks better when there was a little bit of that divide between the suspenders and then that peplum piece. And then the last thing, which is almost unnoticeable, is that I did line the middle section of her lips a smidgen. I really like that she doesn't have her full lip done in color because like it does give more of that puppety sort of vibe. But in the original, I just didn't think it stood out quite enough. So I did line them just a little bit. Again, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see that on screen. Like, I don't know if that's going to be noticeable at all. But me looking at it here, it's noticeable. And I think it's really, really nice to get more of that pop of contrast between the colored portion of her lips and the like the color that matches the rest of her skin. I think that's quite fun. So like, again, extremely subtle. I promise the next one's like the last one's going to be a little bit less subtle. But I feel like just these tiny little improvements make a big difference to the doll. And I really, I like this version. <laughs> and then the last one we have to look at today is the Core Ginger Bread House. So I, to be fair, I'm not someone who really vibes with like sweet themes or like food themes in general really on dolls. I like like fruity themed dolls. I think that's fun. Like I'm a sucker for a good like strawberry or like lemon, that sort of thing. But gingerbread not for me. So in all fairness, this doll wasn't designed with me in mind to begin with, but I still think there are things that we could do to improve her design. A lot of it was color work. I feel like that's a big thing in my last couple of videos is I just feel like the colors need to be shifted in certain places. So when I reveal this, you're going to see a lot of color changing. And then also, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on screen. I did the wrong layer again. This little like cape situation is attached to her jacket and it's just like this strange little sheer cape thing attached to the back of her jacket. I got rid of that entirely. You're probably not going to be able to tell that much. So like the color work is going to be the big thing, but I still wanted to point out the effort that I put in there. Um, but yeah, this is my edited color version of Ginger and I just think it looks a lot more cohesive. I think that the black, I love black. Like I like to wear a lot of black myself, but within the scope of this design, it didn't match like to me it just looked really really jarring so instead I turned her bag and then her jacket into a darker like deep chocolatey color because a first of all that's very thematic same thing with her headband actually like a chocolatey color is perfect for a gingerbread house themed character and I just think that it still gives that contrast like that darker element but it isn't that harsh black that just doesn't really fit in with the rest of her design. And then the other thing that I changed, the most noticeable, I think, is the glasses. She had already this blue on her bracelet, and that was the only piece of blue that she had in her design. And so I wanted to pull that out. I did do blue on part of her shoe as well. But the glasses, especially because she has these glasses that are like the same pink as her hair. And so it just kind of blurs all together. Like it didn't have a lot of contrast to me. Like, you can see them, but it's not a lot. And so I thought that it looked a lot better to tie in that blue some more and let the blue be on her glasses and have a lot more contrast between that light blue of her glasses and then like that vibrant pink of her hair. I just feel like it makes it a lot more visually striking. And I really, really like that. And then I did turn her necklace gold as well, because again, the necklace is the same pink. And like, even though it's not directly up there, it's still so close to the intense pink of her hair. And there's so, so much pink going on already, which like, 
that's super if you want a pink doll. But just in this case, I felt like she needed a lot more contrast. So I tied in some more of that gold. And I feel like it just looks so much better. Like I like all of them. But maybe because this is the most drastic design change, I think this is really, really solid. Like I feel like I did a really good job with this one. Again, it's not like a lot of effort in the sense that I didn't give her an entirely new hairstyle or like remove all of her leggings or like change the length of her skirt. Like I didn't do anything that crazy. I just switched around the colors for the most part. But it is so fascinating to me how much switching those colors makes a huge difference on the overall appearance of the character. And like, as always, y'all are obviously free to give your opinions. Like everyone has a different opinion. And it's just a doll. So like it's chill if you hate what I've done. But I think this is the one that I can justify the most. Like, I think this is genuinely such an improvement. And I'm actually very proud of this one. <laughs> but yes, guys, those are all of the Ever After High dolls that I had to edit for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed this. I know I said several times that a lot of the edits were really subtle, but like, I hope that it was still an entertaining video regardless of that, because sometimes you don't need a big flashy design change. Like sometimes you just need a little shift. And so this was like a fun exercise in doing that. I would love to hear in the comments down below which one is your favorite edit of mine, because like, I obviously like them all, but I want to know which ones you guys <laughs> like. And as I said before, feel free to let me know if there's any other doll brands you want me to do this for. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day or your night or whatever it might be. And I will catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys.